I need to speak to Caesar! The way I approached Caesar in Rise of the Planet of the Apes was very much was from, uh, unlike a character like King Kong, I always approached Caesar like a, a human in ape skin in the sense mm. that he was brought up by Will and, and for all intents and purposes when he was a child believed he was human in, in, until his teenage. So, so um, in all the choices in terms of you know, creating, you know, of course you do a lot of work and research into, into ch chimpanzee behavior and so on. But it was always, and I based him on a, a real chim chimpanzee called Oliver, who in the 1970s was, um, he was, he was actually a, a, a real, a real chimp who was brought up with humans, who was known as the human Z. People believed he was the progeny of, he was transgenic, you know, potentially half ape, half human. Really, what Caesar is all about is, is, is empathy. He is perhaps the only character I think who, who it can see the potential of making things. On, on from the ape side, who who wants to, to make things work? So, so it's it was very important, I suppose, to base the character on a, on a leader who uh, who is capable of empathy, and uh, there aren't that many in the world, I don't think. Apes together, strong. You know, one of the one of the most important and and, and biggest challenges, really, of the of the whole uh, uh, the rehearsal process and leading up to shoot. As I say, Matt wanted to drop in at a period of time where they weren't fully evolved, where they weren't sitting around having philosophical conversations, where you still, you know, could enjoy the evolution. But with that came the challenge of, of course, they were going to be speaking in this film, and how do you make that feel real? How does it actually, you know, in terms of the internal logic of the piece, how does that work? So, so we worked very closely, uh, all of the, uh, the actors playing apes, um, you know, we did, we, there was a lot of improvisation. There was a, there was an ape camp, so to speak, in the sense that there were there was a, a lead up in rehearsal to working out how they would work as a as a group. You don't mean any harm. <laughs> it's about it is about uh, about f about empathy. It's about family, and it's about uh, prejudice, really. I suppose I think ultimately. Um, prejudice on both sides and how both sides deal with the other and, and uh, um, how they uh, you know how they how they manage that prejudice we're, we're trying to push the boundaries in 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 different ways in in, t in the in the live theatrical arena as well because because performance capture is is as I say at the end of the day it's a technology it's a bunch of cameras filming a performers performance yes family future Let's bring up, uh, first of all, Carol Jamie, um, who is a journalist, author and broadcaster who specialises in evolutionary psychology, uh, and uh, Volker Summer, who is a professor of evolutionary anthropology at University College London. So come and join us, guys. Hello, hello. I, I like the fact that, um, you know, Caesar's character has developed as much as as he as he has and the fact that he's he's taught the other ape sign language that's all credible films like this uh, can actually be great um, gr great gospels to to awaken us to the fact that there is a very very serious serious cause which uh, we may want to take up. And that's actually why, why I support stuff like this. You know, I, I think while it looks like fantasy, it's not very far from reality. Just made me realize, of course, we are 97% the same genetically. There is very, very little difference between, you know, I, and I mean, some of my best friends are apes. And, uh, <laughs> you know, it really it, you exactly, exactly. So um, it, it, really, it really does chime in. I mean, what, what you're saying makes perfect sense. One really has to point out that human societies have been studied since hmm, thousands of years and there are records of that, while wild ape societies since 50 years, since our famed and rightly famed Jane Goodall went out to Tanzania and started to, to, to literally live with uh, wild apes. Uh, there, there are about maybe eight or 10 groups, small communities of apes where we know what's going on. I, I sort of become this de facto sort of spokesperson for performance capture technology, mostly because I'm, I suppose I've done more than um, most other actors. But it, but it has to be said that it's proliferating at a fantastic rate, and I, I welcome it with open arms. Thanks to the great apes that are Carol and Andy and Volker. There must be another way. 
Caesar! 